What is one of my most profound experiences with a plant? Many years ago, I was down in Southern California with the Columbine School, with their Southern California Botanical Adventure. And I had done that multiple times, a couple of years in a row. And we'd gone to this place. It was a perfect cross section of high desert and chaparral and sage scrub. It's like this perfect cross section of three primary ecosystems. And it also, it like looks desert, but then there's springs. And it just blows your mind because you're hiking amongst cactus and all of a sudden here's like a bunch of willow, you know, and like willow grows by water. And you're like, wait, what? what what's willow doing here? And it's, it's a really beautiful place. Well, then I didn't live here at the time. I traveled here to study it. Then years later, I moved here. And that's when I started the Sage Country Herbs business and our botanical field apprenticeship. And I was going out to all these different places to find places where I was going to be taking my field students to study local ecology. And one of those places was this very same place. I remembered I had gone there, but it had been like 10 years since I had gone there. And I remember I'm walking along this sandy trail and everything is feeling really familiar. You know, I'm seeing these plants that I totally recognize, this ecosystem, the horizon, it all looks so familiar. And then I come upon this point where this one plant look at him like I know you and it's as if you know it doesn't always happen like this for me but it was as if this plant literally was like hey you know me and I was like oh I smell the leaf I do know you Uriodictyon trichocalyx this is the uh, beautiful yerba santa a native yerba santa to southern California and absolutely gorgeous plant, whether it's in flower or not, deep green resinous leaves on the top, downy white covered in little hairs on the bottom, such a sweet resinous scent, so beautiful. And it was so cool to just have a plant be like, hey! Another story with a plant that I would like to share is my respectful relationship with the plant poison oak, Toxicodendron diversolobum. So a lot of people will say, oh, I'm not allergic when they're introduced to poison oak. But the thing is, is that you have to be careful about saying that. Um, I was not reactionary to poison oak for most of my herbal career, most of my beginning life until I was about 28 when we went on what we lovingly referred to as the death hike. Obviously, no death happened, but it certainly could have. And uh, this was a hike, it was in Arizona. It was a long hike, it was on private property. It was amazing. But when we got to our destination after six hours of hiking, what it was was a waterfall from a spring that just bubbled up. And it, the whole area looked like Oregon, but we were in Arizona. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, our guide was um, very experienced um, and he had a rope tied around a rock at the top of the waterfall. That's what we hiked up to, the top of the waterfall. And he expected us to just use the rope and shimmy down a 20, 30 foot waterfall. To which, if you're experienced with that, there's no harnesses here, by the way. Um, maybe that's possible for him, but not for me and my now husband. We were like, mm, we're not really comfortable with doing that. Um, especially after hiking for six hours, because that means it's six hour hike back in. So what we... Um, other option was to hike up and around and slide down the hillside over there on all those dead branches. Okay, we'll do that. You know what woody branches love to grow around water? Yeah, poison oak. But there were no leaves, so I didn't recognize it. So we just went up and we slid down and we had a grand time. It was beautiful, beautiful, amazing. The water, it was a hot day. The water was nice and cool, but not too cold. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. And then the hike back was pretty intense. Uh, we had gotten up at five that morning to get out there. We didn't get home until two in the morning. Um, it was a really long day and we were really exhausted. And by the next day, I had a big smacker of poison oak on my bum. 
I also happened, the first nettle sting I ever got was also on my bum. So apparently that sensitive tissue is like, hey, we're experiencing it. So, I mean, the cool thing about being an herbalist is like, we've got this whole, so many options to be able to work with, right? So on one hand, I was like, oh man, that's like my first bout of poison oak. And on the other hand, it was like, oh, okay, I can try all these different things. I tried some tincture of mugwort, some tincture of manzanita. I did some, some um, uh, water infusion washes. I did all different things to, um, to really address that poison oak. And um, everything helped a little bit, but ultimately, honestly, the thing that helped me the most at the time was wearing the tightest jeans that I had so that I couldn't itch it. That was definitely the thing that stopped it from getting irritated because, whoa, is it itchy. So if you fast forward that to now, one of the plants that we meet on the very first day of the Sage Country Herbs Botanical Field Apprenticeship is poison oak in its dormant state. It's just a bunch of sticks that look like they're dead sticking out of the ground, usually by water. We start there because we can actually get to know this plant we can create a relationship with this plant and we can watch it so that we learn about what this plant looks like in all forms, in dormancy, in bare stick, in leaf, in flower, in fruit. We actually key it out when it's in flower and fruit. We key without touching. And then we can watch it as it goes into, as it finishes its fruits, all those leaves turn a brilliant bright red. People say there's no red in the fall time in Southern California. Not true. We may not have a lot of maples turning red um, in the fall time, but we have a lot of poison oak that turns red. Getting to know a plant, any plant, in all of its forms. This is part of what we do with the field apprenticeship. We talk about creating relationships with plants. Instead of looking at plants as commodities of like, what can it do for me? we look and we teach about looking at plants as friends, as allies. How can I benefit you while I'm hoping that you're benefiting me or while I'm learning about how you can benefit me? And what a beautiful relationship that is. When I think about poison oak, how is it benefiting me? Well, it certainly slows me down. It teaches me patience and awareness. It also happens to have a common name called guardian of the forest. And I gotta like any plant that has a common name of guardian of the forest, even if I don't wanna touch it. So now when I see poison oak, which I see it right away, it calls out to me because I'm very susceptible to it. I've gotten it numerous times, not in the past bunch of years, but when I see it, it waves. And I say, oh, hey, poison oak, and I wave, and I stand, stand clear. I have a relationship with this plant. I can't confuse it with any other plant. Um, I was out on a plant walk years ago, and we were talking about a plant. Um, I think it was the, the native elder tree. And somebody in the plant walk said, but how do you know? And we said, well, you can look at the compound leaves. You can look at the flat topped umble like inflorescence. And they were like, but really, how do you know? And I thought about it for a moment. And I said, well, I know this is this plant because I have a relationship with this plant. I have seen this plant when it is dormant and when it's in flower and when it's in fruit. And I've sat underneath this plant. I have spent time investing in learning this plant. I mean, I like to think about plants in the same way that we think about making a friend. You know, I can say that like, oh yeah, here's this, you know, here's this student that, that reminds me of my really good friend, Jesse. And I have had that experience, but I would never actually think they were my friend, Jesse, because I know Jesse through and through. We have been through all kinds of things as friends. So I would never actually confuse Jesse with any other person, even another friend who has that, that heart connection. Jesse is Jesse. She absolutely stands as who she is. Well, so is poison oak. Poison oak is Toxicodendron diversilobum. And I will not confuse that plant with any other. <laughs>